All right, so lesson 12, we're gonna get into what's called synthetic division. You're gonna love this because it's gonna make your life a lot easier when it comes to division. We've learned reverse tabular method, we've learned long division, right? Now synthetic division will make it easier to divide polynomials, okay? Um, if you're given a choice on a test or an exam, you can use synthetic division instead of long division or reverse tabular method, and you're gonna like it a lot better. Also, synthetic division can be used to find roots or factor, factors or roots. Uh, and we're gonna do that as well in this lesson. There's, there's um, remember synthetic substitution, it's the same process, except now we're, it's always gonna come out to be zero because we're looking for roots. And, and that's, we're gonna talk more about that in this lesson as well. So here is two problems, and here's a long division, and here is a synthetic division. Okay, long division, synthetic division, and it shows that you, this, this example just shows that you get the same answer if you do both. So if you wanna read this over and kinda of compare how it works, I'm not gonna work through that with you because it's already done for you. I'm just gonna jump into the examples on this video just so you could see how it works. So here, here we go, use synthetic division to find the quotient. Well, you already know what synthetic substitution is, so the process for synthetic division is gonna be easy for you in this lesson. It's just what we're going to focus on, what's going to be new to you today, is the meaning of the answer, basically, and how you take the numbers and go back to the polynomial, because you do have to give a polynomial answer. All right, so synthetic division. Again, you take the, the, the first number of each, all the coefficients, so it's 1, 6, 3, 54, uh, 1, 6, 3, 54, this is where we me people mess up. See how it's x plus three? It's not three in the box, it's negative three. The reason why is we have to use the root. So remember yesterday's lesson where we factored and we had like x plus three equals zero? Well, we would have had like two binomials equals zero. You have to set it equal to zero. x plus three equals zero, x equals negative three. When x plus three equals zero, x is actually negative three. So the substitution is negative three into the synthetic. Just like we would have done synthetic substitution and you'd substitute in whatever number you wanna plug in would go in the box. Now it's, the, it's essentially the opposite of whatever you see in the factor, okay? It's the solution when the, when the root equals zero, when the factor equals zero. So you would have to use negative three here in, this, in the synthetic, all right? So now we're doing our synthetic division. Bring down the one, negative three, three, add down, uh, multiply across, negative nine, add down, multiply across, uh, 18. And of course, what did I do? I forgot a zero, Mr. Ventry. Did anybody else catch that? I forgot my zero. Let's try that again. Okay, so here's the 18. Good thing I caught it. 18 and then 18 times negative three is negative 54, there we go. Now we got our zero. Synthetic division, you don't get zero, you did something wrong uh, until the end of this lesson. We'll talk about that later. So how do we make sense of this now? What's the quotient? The quotient has to be a polynomial. You're taking a, a four term polynomial, a fourth degree polynomial, you're dividing by a one degree, first degree polynomial, so you need to get a third degree polynomial. So what is it? You just drop down one degree. So this is now x to the third. See how we started with x to the fourth? It was fourth degree. Your answer is gonna be one degree less. So this is the coefficient for x to the third. It's one x to the third plus, this is a plus three, plus three x squared. See this minus six, minus six x, and then bring down plus 18. That's a plus 18. Okay, and that is your division. So all you guys that struggle with long division reverse tabular method, I might still, I'm still gonna make you do that because you don't know what they're gonna do on the exam and, you, and it's a good thing to know, but this is a shortcut to doing reverse tabular method for division or long division. You get the same exact answer. Let's do one more here, um, x plus three again. So again, it's negative three. This time I'm missing the square term. So it's three negative two, zero, 91, negative 24. Bring down my three. I'm gonna go quickly through this because we should know it. 
What's that? Okay. What was that? Whoa, okay. Uh, let's see. 3, negative 9, negative 11 when you add down. 33 is 33. Multiply negative 99, negative 8. 24, 0. There we go. We got our 0. What is our quotient? Well, it was a fourth degree, so now we're down to the third degree. This is 3x to the third, third degree, minus 11x squared plus 33x minus 8. Just put the coefficients back in, and that's it. So that's synthetic division, guys, in place of long division. Now, factor theorem. When you have a factor, it can be used to factor. If you're given one factor of a polynomial, you can find all the factors as long as it's a third degree. Anything higher than that, if it's a fourth degree, they got to give you two factors. If it's a fifth degree, they got to give you three factors. But you can use synthetic division to factor. So it's the same process. X plus 2 is the factor. So we have to do X equals negative 2 in our substitution. Uh, nothing missing here. 1, negative 3, negative 6, and 8. I'm running through these quick. And 0. Okay? So, what does that mean? Well, it was third degree. So now we're down to second degree, which is x squared. So it's 1x squared minus 5x plus 4 times x plus 2 because, whoops, because x plus 2 was my original factor. Remember, now we're factoring. We're not, we're not dividing, we're factoring. But division is factoring. So it's kind of the same thing, except they want you to write the factors out. This times this are factors. Is it factored completely, though? It is not, because this trinomial can be factored more. x plus 2 is one of my factors. You can still factor using methods we already learned. We've been doing this all year x minus 4, x minus 1, there it is. So my factors are x plus 2, x minus 4, x minus 1. That's factored completely. And then to solve the equation, well, it's the exact same polynomial equal to 0. We did that yesterday. We did that in lesson um, 12. And we did that in lesson 11, I'm sorry. We did that in lesson 11 where you have, okay, now I have the factors. I already know my factors. I'm just stealing them from above. Equals zero. Well, then set them all equal to zero. So I get negative two. I get positive four and positive one. So my solution set would be negative two, one, and four. Okay, a few more here. Given that x equals 2 is a solution. Okay, now they're giving you the solution. So you don't change the sign. You already got it. x equals 2. That goes in the box. Synthetic. 3, negative 4, negative 9, 10. Nothing missing. 3, 2, 1. Okay, so there we go. 3, 6, 2, 4, negative 5, negative 10, 0. All right, so now I have, well, third degree down to second degree, so it's 3x squared plus 2x minus 5, all right, equals 0. And I know, I already know that, well, since x equals 2, it must have been x minus 2 is my other factor. But I already know x equals 2 is an answer. I don't even care about that. I already know x equals 2 is one root. I'm trying to find the other solutions. Well, now I'm gonna, it's going to require me to factor to get the other solutions. I can factor now. 3x, x. If you're not good at factoring, guys, you've got to talk to me. Well, I've got to work with you. I've got to work with you in class. Get you going on it. Stay after school with me. We'll help you out. All right, 5 and 1, 
and the inside's 5x, the outside's 3x, that gives me 2x plus minus. All right, so now I'm gonna go equal to zero, 3x plus five equals zero, x minus one equals zero. This is obviously one, and I have to, I have to solve this one here. Subtract five, divide by three. All right, so my solution set, change colors here, my solution set is negative five-thirds, one and two. Don't forget about the original given answer, one and two. Find all solutions. There we go. Given x plus four is one factor, factor it completely. Okay, so x plus four is one factor. Therefore, negative four must go in my synthetic box. Uh, nothing missing. 2, 13, 14, negative 39, negative 60. Big numbers here. All right, 2, negative 8, 5, negative 20, negative 6, 24, negative 15, uh, 60, 0. All right, so now I got it. It was fourth degree. Now we're down to third degree. So this is 2x to the third plus 5x squared minus 6x minus 15. All right, and I want to factor this completely. I already know x plus 4 is one factor. I just stole that from up here. There it is. I got to factor this more. Okay, so I'm looking for a common. This is a four term, so I'm going to do my grouping method. I'm going to split it down the middle. I'm going to see, all right, I got a common factor here. I have x squared common here. I'm going to take that out, 2x plus 5. And I'm going to take out a negative, what, a negative 3 here. And that leaves me a 2x plus 5. So my common binomial is 2x plus 5. And then x squared minus 3. And then, of course, don't forget to carry down the given x plus 4. That is factored completely. So given one factor, you sometimes can get all the factors using methods we've previously learned. And we use synthetic division to help us out here. What if there is a remainder? We've been doing all these division problems. You ever wonder why it always comes out to be 0? Does it always have to be 0? Well, it doesn't. And you're going to see now that it, it, it won't come out to be 0. Use long division, use synthetic division. Um, well, first of all, in this box here, I just want to do this example. 121 divided by 4. Well, this, is, this just kind of shows you that you don't have to, it doesn't go in evenly. Like, obviously, 4 doesn't go into 121 evenly. An even number can't go into an odd number. So what would you do? 4 goes into 12 three times. 4 times 3 is 12. Subtract, and you get a remainder of 1. 3 remainder 1. So you could do that, but what we're going to do is look at it another way. I was dividing by 4, so another way to do this up here, we would say that this equals 3, right, and 1 over 4. 4 was what I was dividing by. 1 is my remainder. 1 divided by 4 is what's left over. So 3 plus 1 over 4 is 3 and 1 fourth. I don't know if you ever knew that or if you remember, but you at some point you've done this. It's probably been a long time, um, but that's what it means. When you have a remainder of 1, you're divided by 4. It's a remainder of 1 fourth, so 3 and 1 fourth. All right, so therefore, that's how you would do that. So we're going to do this the same way with our long division here. And I'm actually going to skip the long division because we know it's going to come out to be the same. You may want to try it just to show, show that it comes out to be the same. But, uh, okay, so now it's x plus 3 I'm dividing by. So therefore, I'm going to use negative 3. I'm going to use x equals negative 3. So negative 3 in my synthetic box. And I'm going to go 2, 7, 0, negative 4. And I'm just going to show you what happens when you get a remainder. comes out to be 9. And look at that. Negative 4, see, I don't match. Negative 4 plus 9 is 5. Box that remainder up. That's the remainder, ladies and gentlemen. We've been getting remainders of 0. So we never wrote it, but it's like plus 0 over whatever you're dividing by. 
in this case, so we're going to write out the polynomial, the, uh, div, the quotient here, 2x squared, because we had a third degree, 2x squared plus 1x minus 3 plus 5 over x plus 3. It was a, it was a remain, you can put the x plus 3 in parentheses, you don't have to. 5 was the remainder divided by the divisor. Remainder over divisor. They just throw it on the end there. I know it looks weird and ugly and everyone, those of us that like nice, neat things, it just not, math isn't neat sometimes. And that does happen. So that's how you handle having a remainder. And we're going to see a couple of those in class tomorrow. See you then.